Welcome to the first technical tutorial where we'll start using MATLAB. Remember, the end goal of this series is to automate Where's Wally? And that's going to involve manipulating images and visualizing data. So in this lab, we're going to finish by producing these plots. This is not only necessary for the end task of finding Wally, but a good skill in general. MATLAB can produce some very nice plots. Even if it's something you could do in Excel, you can use MATLAB to very quickly get some very nice figures for your reports. During this tutorial, we'll be referring to the MATLAB help documentation most times we encounter a new MATLAB function. We'll be writing our code in a file called a script, and other than that, we'll be importing and manipulating and exporting data. The functions we'll use in this tutorial are listed here on the right. We'll be importing images from files so that we can manipulate them in MATLAB, we'll be converting them to grayscale, and in future labs, we'll be exclusively using grayscale images for image processing. This is done regularly for image processing and computer vision. We'll also be making some high quality plots, not just for visualizing the data, but of a suitable quality that you'd expect in a report. All right, let's get started in MATLAB. So this is the default view in MATLAB. I normally find this a bit cluttered and I swap over to this one. All right, let's get started by making a new script. I will call this something sensible like tutorial one. All right, well, the first thing we need to do is we need to import this Wally image so that we can plot it. Now the function that we're going to use to import this Wally image is called imread. And we can find out the help documentation for that. Okay, help imread. And it looks like to use this function, we can just call imread with a file name. Let's try this. Well, let's name it something sensible. How about image C for color, because we're also going to make a grayscale one. Imread. I need to put this in quotes. Wally.jpg. Let's see how this goes. And I'll frequently use the keyboard shortcut for run. Okay, that's a lot of plotting. Put the semicolon there to suppress that. Okay. See here we've read in the, the image. All right. We want to can we want to make a grayscale Wally as well. So that's going to be important for image processing. And we need to convert a color image to a grayscale image. So MATLAB has a function for that, but if we ever want to do something in MATLAB and we're not quite sure how to do it, a quick Google will normally resolve that. And MATLAB often gives you, it's often the first search result with exactly what you want. So if I search MATLAB convert color image to grayscale, it's one of the first results. What do we get? MATLAB, okay, looks like it's a help page for a function. So we've got RGB to gray. How do we use this? Well, if we've imported a image using, using imread, looks like we can then call RGB to gray to convert it to grayscale. Hit run. And that worked. All right, well, let's go ahead and plot these images. Let's put a comment here so we know what we're doing. Here we're importing images from file. And we want to delete all this as well. So CLC. So we might also want to clear all these variables every time that we run a script so that we're never accidentally referring to an old variable. Okay, in MATLAB we can use figure to open up a new figure. Let's just give this a go. So we can see here that opened up a new figure. And if we call figure again, Every time you call figure in MATLAB, it opens up a new figure. So we don't want that. We can use close to close all these figures. We can force MATLAB to open up 
the same figure every time. Now if we want to plot an image, just like m, m read is the function to read in, in an image, MATLAB's got several functions actually to plot images, but one of them is m show. And if we want to plot an image, we can just simply do we can simply do this. And there we go, we get a wally. Do the same thing there. There we go. All right, but we want to plot two side by side. So MATLAB ha also has a mechanism for this. It's called the subplot command. So the way we use subplot is we tell it how many rows and columns of images we want. So we want two images side by side. So that's one row and two columns. And we want to edit the first one. And then we want to do this again. We want to do this for image underscore G for grayscale. There we go, we get two Wally side by side. All right, now we should probably label these room. Figures should always have labels. If we want to label the X axis of an image, we can call X label. We can call that with with the string. Now we want to call these sensible things like uh, x and y or u and v. So let's label the x-axis u, and it's got units as well. And the units are, units are pixels. And this is important later on when we complete the task of automating where's Wally. That algorithm is going to produce a result, which is a pixel location for Wally's face. It's important then that we can track down in the image where that is. So for the X label, we're going to call it U and the Y label, we're going to call V. There we go. I'm going to give it a title. Let's give it the title of Color Wally. Okay. There's no numbers on the axis yet. So that's important as well for finding Wally. We need to know which axis is which and we need to know what we need to know what each we need to know where to track down Wally in the image. There we go. You might want to change the We might find by default that these, these titles are a little bit small or a little bit big. You know, we can actually force MATLAB to, to make a title a certain font size. So we can see this one's much larger than that guy. Do that down here as well. Font size. Now, one thing to notice is if you've got a lot of plots going on and you want to change the font size of every axis you have, we can automate this as well. There's a, there's a quick way of telling MATLAB that you have a default font size. I normally put this at the top of my code as well. I just label it housekeeping or something like that. So you can tell MATLAB that you want to set, and in MATLAB, the MATLAB function set can be used for setting a whole bunch of different, a whole bunch of different things in MATLAB. So we put set zero, which is pretty much set everything, or set default. And we can call default axis font size we can call this let's say let's say 10 this is going to be the font size of the lay the numbers on the axis 
There we go. And by default, all of the titles and axes labels will be the same font size as the tick labels here. What we can do is, instead of specifying the font size directly for the title and for the axis labels, we can tell it by what factor we want it to be larger than the, than the tick label font size. So we can call default axis label font size. And this is actually not a font size. This is this multiplies this font size here. So let's say we want this to be a font size of 18. We'll put 18 on 10 here. How does that look? There we go, we get bigger labels. And we can do the same thing for the title. It's almost the same, so I'm just gonna copy and paste. And we want default title. Sorry, it's default axis title font size multiplier. So we want this to be 25. Sorry, it's default axis title font size. And maybe we want to set this as a variable here. So let's go um, tick font size. Let's replace each of these. Keep everything a little bit neater. That should still work perfectly. Okay, well, we've got our nice plot and we're pretty happy with it. The next thing we want to do is we want to export these images. We want to export the we want to export the grayscale Wally image so that we can use it later in other tutorials so that we can use the grayscale images for image processing. So let's export that first. We use imread for reading in an image. It's no surprise, imwrite is the function for writing an image to file. And in fact, if we go help imread, it's got other, it suggests a whole bunch of other related functions. One of those is imwrite. So if you, if you know roughly what function you're after or you know a related function, you can often play the Wikipedia game with these links to get to the right function. And it works the same way. Or very similarly, if we go M right, we give it a we give it the data. So we want to write image underscore G to a file. And let's call this Gray Wally. And let's save it as a PNG. Now if we run that, we get an image appear here. We get a gray wally. What else do we want to do? Well, we've just made this plot. Let's suppose we've got a, got a report due. We need a figure for our report. We can use the MATLAB command save as. We tell it the number of the figure that we want. One. And we want to save this as Wally plot, and save that as a PNG again. Now, if we look at this Wally plot, we've got our plot saved to file. If you're saving a lot of figures regularly, your folder can get quite cluttered, so you can put in a relative file path here as well. Figures. We get an error here. So it looks like we need to make the directory first. If we don't do that, MATLAB won't have a directory to save it to. There we go. Now figures was an empty folder. Now it's got two plots in it. So that basically concludes this first tutorial on introductory. So that, that basically concludes the data visualization tutorial. Oh, 
So that basically concludes our first tutorial. But if you're doing these exercises in our GitHub template, you would have started with some template code that looks basically like this. With one exception, down at the bottom of your template, you'll have some code that looks like this. Now what this does is this runs those series of tests that we talked about in the last video that tell you how much of the exercise you've completed and, and which parts you've got incorrect and which parts you've got correct. Just got a directory here that I'm going to pull in. So now if we run this, we'll get a series of passing or failing tests. I can see here that we've passed all of them except for one here. So all these little ticks will show us the ones that have passed. And it looks like this one here, the one that tests, we've got a test that tests the naming of the figures. It looks like we've spelt gray wrong, depending on how you think it should be spelt. So if we change that, we should get all these tests passing now. So you'll see code like this at the end of every, every template. We don't need to know exactly how it works. It just runs a series of tests that we wrote for you to give you feedback. That concludes our first MATLAB tutorial. In the next one, we'll be using MATLAB to manipulate data in arrays.